Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to quickly run over some elements in setting up a paper background. Now the paper backdrop, it's timeless, it's elegant and if you don't feel comfortable in showing your home on your YouTube video or perhaps you don't think that you can create an interesting background composition, the paper backdrop is the perfect alternative. I'm sure everyone is familiar with the paper backdrop. It's a seamless sheet of paper used for photography or interviews, and it promotes a sense of professionalism and a creative stature. While you may have seen paper backdrops that extend dozens of feet, you can actually acquire a small roll of paper, which is perfect for creating that professional environment in just about anywhere. You can pick up a backdrop stand for $100 to $150, and these stands are a little different because they have a crossbar attachment instead of your typical mountain thread. Now, as my old high school teacher would like to point out on my report card, Lewis likes to be different and do things differently. Uh, obviously here, we can see past our paper backdrop and into the background of the Grungy Garage, but that's because we wanted to be a little bit meta uh, and kind of emulate an old school in the mogul vibe. But if we were to stick on a 50 millimeter lens and decompress the space between me and the camera as seen in my new Tinder in my new LinkedIn picture, uh, the backdrop has become all but one with the camera composition. Now when browsing the photo and video website for paper backdrops, you may be encumbered by the sheer quantity of different colors there is available to purchase. However, before you start adding everything to your cart, Jump into a little bit of color theory and think about the type of content that you're going to be creating. If your background is a bright yellow or a snazzy pink, it's going to signify that as a creator, you might be upbeat and energized and it could be for a makeup tutorial or a food tutorial. If the background is dark, a dark blue or a dark red, uh, it might connotate that the information is going to be somewhat more serious. It might be an educational video. Because of the compact environment, we don't necessarily need an abundance of light. A key and fill light are all I'm using but my fill is only slightly less intense than the key light, so we have a low contrast ratio. The primary importance is to make sure both lights are soft lights by diffusing them, so that the light is evenly spread, and most importantly, it doesn't cast a shadow on the backdrop. If I remove the diffusion, you can see the light is a lot harsher. I'm using a light dome softbox on my key light, but I understand not everyone has the resources to buy a softbox. For example, I'm using nothing more than just a few sheets of diffusion paper, which is essentially the posh word for tracing paper, but it does the job if you're in a money pinch. So what about lighting for the backdrop itself? Because we're in a small environment, a bedroom, your living room, a garage. Uh, we're not gonna be able to put lights on the ceiling or the rafters and expose for the backdrop. So if I turn off the backdrop itself, we can see that it's not necessarily become invisible, but there's now a lack of depth. It's become very flat. And what we need to do, we need to illuminate that to bring me away from the backdrop. All I've done is very simply is place the light on the floor, act as an uplight and exposed the backdrop. Another frugal and space saving setup uh, for illuminating your backdrop is to just get a light stand, position the light instead of facing upwards across the entire backdrop, just have it pointed at the center behind your lower back. And that's gonna create a somewhat circular gradient and give it a different feel, but still it's uh, space saving and it's gonna allow you to create this setup. Okay, that is me done for today. For the next tutorial, uh, we're gonna leave this set and we're heading out to the Walsh wilderness uh, to discuss some elements on what aperture you should use when filming or even photographing landscape environments. So I'll catch you then.